go to the light Hendrickson. And I found that the light Hendrickson, I, there is a dark Hendrickson, but I don't usually see them as much as I do the light Hendricksons. The dark Hendrickson, everybody ties it in gray, but the dark Hendrickson actually is, is, is tan, bronze. It's got a little bit of different colors. And that's why the um, red quill, I don't know if you're familiar with the red quill, red quill dry fly is a good fly to use in the Hendrickson hatch because that will imitate the male. But like I said, I've seen more um, light Hendricksons than I have dark. So we're going to do this. The, the um, Hendricksons, Theodore, I think his name is Theodore Gordon. Is it Gordon? Theodore Gordon? Mm -hmm. In 1916, he made this fly. This is how old this fly is. And when they tied it, they tied it instead of a divided wing. They bunched, they just bunched a bunch of wood duck and slanted it this way, and that's all they had. So what they did when they tied this in, they would bunch their fibers like this, and they would tie that in so the feather would sit like that when they first started doing this. The new style dry flies, they're going for skinny and long, okay? Skinny and long is all right, but you miss out on a good feather. Where they see how they trim them now? Before, they used to trim them wide, and on the side of your hackle it was the best tailing material that there ever was. It was stiff and it was long. You can't find that anymore on the new necks. So what they've done, Whitting has come out with Coke de Leon tailing fibers. Okay, the best darn, is better than that hackle. These things are nice and stiff. And they come in assortment of different colors too. I found out they come out, they came out with a dun, which is what I'd like to have this, but I didn't know they did. So I'm gonna use a light one. So we just pull a fiber off at that side. And one of the things that you need to do when you tie, if you have the right wood duck feather, you do not have to clip that little stem. Those fibers are long enough, they'll go past the end of that stem. You don't have to do that, you just divide them. That's just a step you don't need to do because you're going to ruin your wood duck because you might trim it wrong. Then you got to sit there and fumble with it to get it straight. So when, when you're doing it, remember you want a long fiber like this. A little lower. Not like that. How's yeah. that? Yeah. You don't want a short one. You want a long one. Okay? We're going to use tan thread. And you always start with your wings. So I have this one cleaned up. And all you do is just keep playing with it till you get it set right. Okay? And you want a hook length. This is important, your proportions on a cat skill dry fly. You have to have your proportions right or it's not going to float right. So you want a hook gap from right where the bend of the hook starts to the eye. So we'll get a measurement. That's a little bit long. So that's about right. Well, when I tie it in, that's going to be about right. And never cut it straight across. Cut it at an angle. Because when you do that, then you can wrap it. You don't have a lot of bulk there. So you come back up right behind it, pull these up, and wrap a dam in front. Till we get this standing up tall. That's pretty good right there. So I'm going to excuse me for a second, but I got to turn it towards me so I can see this part. So you want to kind of even out your fibers and then do a crisscross wrap.
Okay, that's pretty good right there. Okay, and then we're going to take this Coke de Leon. I always mess that up. <laughs> and we're going to take like eight or nine fibers. Now here's another thing that you need to do your proportion. Your proportion is a hook gap, or the hook shank again. So you got your wings and your tail. Remember hook shank. So we'll make it the hook shank in length. You can trim a lot of this off. Top, let it lay on right on in front of you on your side of the hook, and it'll twist right around. And you want to fill that gap in. I said thread base is important to me. It makes it easier when you want to dub a good looking body. Okay. Trimming a couple fibers off. Okay. Now, the Light Hendrickson's have a pink tint to them. I use dyed otter fur. Yeah. Okay, it's real fine. And you can find it dyed, it's hard to find. So if you ever find tan otter, and if you can find pink, sometimes it's it's tanned a pale pink just for basically just for this fly okay and this I don't know if you can see it but right there, can you see that it's pink mm -hmm. it's got a really pink that's about the right color for them you can get away with cream but I don't know I'm particular and so are the trout sometimes they key on a certain color so use that color so what we'll do he said, we'll dub a little bit here. And when you do this one, you want to use just a little bit at a time, and you want to make it tight. I mean, bear down. Bear down on your index finger and your thumb. And make that tight. I'm still getting used to these fire holes. They got an extra long hook. There we go. There, that's better. Okay, now, and I was saying proportions. When you tie a dry fly, let's see if I can do it. You want a hook gap and half of that. This space in here, and then half as long again. It's going to make that ride perfect. You can make it a little bit longer, and you can always cheat and trim it off, but you want a gap and a half. So let's double check here. So what we're using here is a medium to light dun. That's, that's a proper color for that. Now the dark one, you, you want to use a dark dun. So what we're going to do, we're going to strip our fibers off. Trim that down. We're going to lay that on my side or on your side. Take a couple wraps there. Pull your wing material up. Make a couple wraps there. And come back and then trim that little piece of hackle stem off okay now I guess it was back in 1978 when I first learned how to tie dry flies I saw George Harvey down at the University of Maryland he told me because I, I picked his brain because I want to learn how to tie flies I said how do you get your hackle to stand up so straight he says that's a good question I'll show you he said, take a tiny little bit of dubbing, spin it real tight, go around your thread, pull your wing fire, your wing up, and there. That's going to make your hackle stand straight up. It's not going to press down on that hook and that thread and make it go everywhere. Three wraps in the back is all you need. Pull your fibers for, back, toward, back towards the bend, and two wraps. Oops. Two wraps is all you need. Wrap around. Clip it off. Get that strange little piece of 
wood duck. Now, back, I guess, in the day, they never would wrap it all the way to the eye. They would leave it to make the head come back a little bit like that. And you just whip finish it. Now, here's a little trick. Don't ever go in there and cut your hackle off. Don't do that. There's nothing worse than tying it. You, oh, man, that is the most perfect fly I've ever tied. You go to clip it, and you cut your hackle, too. Nothing worse than that. What you want to do is just barely open your scissors, put a little tension on it, and slide it through. You don't cut any hackle. You just cut your thread off. And what we want to do is just look at, you might have a couple stray hackles here and there. That's a light Hendrickson.